What's going on ladies and gents and welcome back to more Rainbow Six Siege today Well, we're gonna be talking about of course the thing that everyone's most looking forward to the new operators for Operation Parabellum Now they will be released on the TTS coming or the test server I think they're just calling it out on May 22nd So we'll get to play that on Tuesday, which is a lot of fun So expect some streams and all that good gameplay from that but let's talk about the two new operators that we fully got to see their abilities in action and I'm pretty happy to say that well, at least for one of them, I wasn't too far off. So if you guys did see the teaser video for Alibi, I did talk about how what I thought her gadget did. So they were keeping still with the theme of global uh, global abilities, but they changed how they work. And in a very good way. They're not as blatantly broken as Operation Chimera was. So Alibi throws down these prism, uh, the Prisma gadget trap kind of thing, and when the attackers shoot it or touch it, uh, you get scanned like Jackal, uh, like Jackal would be scanning you except from defense. So you get scanned, the person has to run away, um, and then Alibi, being a three-speed operator, can chase you down like a psychopath and murder you. So of course this does lead into a lot of baiting, a lot of, you know, other stuff. So of course, promoting teamwork synergy, of course, have someone on the flank, have a cab come around, sneak a couple shots in, you know, 99 damage, you're down and out screaming with an interrogation going down. Uh, they can be disabled by shooting the base of their feet. Uh, that's how you destroy them. They can also be shocked by a Twitch drone. A Thatcher EMP will temporarily disable it, and Glass can look right through it with his thermal scope. Things to also note about them, they can't be seen, um, or the way you tell the difference between the... Uh, the decoy and her is that the decoy will always have the default gear on uh, so headgears uh, body plate all that will always be default as well as she'll always be holding the MX4 uh, storm SMG so if you happen to notice in the drone phase that the alibi has the uh, fully automatic shotgun on and maybe a different body gear it will kind of give away what their changes so it might be more beneficial to actually run the same gear as the decoy just because you want to play to the best of your ability obviously you run attachments on your gun you don't want to sacrifice too much uh but that is something nice that we can add to the gun which you know or, or add to that gadget which is very fun to look forward to so there's other things that kind of come with her ability too you can throw this gadget outside and it apparently cloaks anyone it says you're detected but you're hidden by the decoy so it doesn't tell you who's actually outside or kind of hides you in some sort of way while you're outside and this gadget's going around. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. You don't have to be scanned or you can't be seen and it allows you to essentially play dummy and possum. Now this ability will go away after 10 seconds of the gadget being outside, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, but at the same time, it's not unfortunate because it's called game balance. So yeah, so it's almost turning the outside area and runouts into an actual objective playing field which is pretty awesome. So you now really have to be careful with being baited. She's a very strong operator for baiting. That's all she's based around. So if you're not ready for that, or say you drop a, here's a good one, you drop a hologram in a window that looks like she's spawn peeking. Someone shoots it, they get scanned, then someone runs out from the other end and blasts you in the face. That's another way you can do it. It's really intense and really awesome, and I think it's a very interesting way to psychologically mess with the attackers uh i don't think it's overpowered at, at at all if any like if it is something that does become very difficult in the game to utilize they can easily just drop down her decoys from three to two but for the most part she seems like a very fun operator uh something that i'm looking forward to seeing in pro league because of the psychological twist that she'll bring to it and just overall really how people pay attention and how sharp your reflexes really are uh, from bottom to top tier. This will definitely be an operator that in low tier, like the very low skill players will suffer from because they're just going to shoot everything in sight. And then I believe in high tier play, we'll mostly see them in positions for like, you know, uh, head level, posi like smarter sp uh, spots like I was saying earlier like having them look out a window for a spawn peak or having them in some sort of head glitch and look like they're holding a pixel peak angle really exploit people trying to be exploiting you know what I mean and stuff like that so you have someone trying to hold a pixel angle put a decoy there they shoot the decoy they're scanned they now lose their advantage you can really put a lot of power and intel into a person's hand with alibi and that's what these two operators are based around 
So, speaking about Intel, let's talk about Maestro. Maestro, the wonderful, jolly man that he is, is a three-armor operator, so he won Thick Boy, as they said at the panel. So, Maestro's ability is that he puts down this thing called the Evil Eye. It is a super bulletproof camera, uh, they're, what they're testing on the TTS and what will be brought into the next patch. We'll be looking at that, and then what it does is you can see through sp uh, smoke... Uh, it will only be temporarily disabled by a Twitch drone or a Thatcher grenade. So this will allow Maestro to essentially have an ultimate anchoring position. This will allow people to see the plants going down, to see the glasses peaking. Now what you're thinking, okay, so it gets destroyed by a Twitch drone and EMP. Like I said, not on the start, it's just disabled, like kind of a static field, like the Yokai drone. So anyone can see through this, that's the global ability, it's another camera, which is amazing. But this will also give Maestro, only Maestro, the ability to go on the evil eye and open it up and allow a laser beam to start shooting through. I know, I, I just said laser beam and it's Rainbow Six Siege. We're, we're in it, boys. We're halfway to Overwatch at this point. So with that, uh, it doesn't do massive amount of damage. It's not a one-shot kill the head. All it is is essentially a stinger, if you will. Kind of like this little five damage sort of thing. It can last a while. It can overheat. But once the eye is open, you can shoot the eye and destroy it. That is what will leave it vulnerable to where you can just destroy it with bullets or a twitch drone at that point. As long as it's open, the twitch drone can destroy it. If it's closed, it will only disable it. You can also destroy this thing with explosives. Ass charges, grenades, fuse pucks, stuff like that. It will be destroyed. Also, Sledge's Hammer. You can walk up and bring them to the slam, if you will. It's kind of a nice little buff to Sledge. Really helps countering that intel operation. Something pretty, you know, important, if you will. So, Sledge has some use, and, you know, it allows him to actually get use out of his 25 hammer swings, if you will. Um, but other than that, he looks like a really fun operator. Now, the main thing to notice about him is that his guns. Barring the very strong pistol, they both get a magnum and then a revolver shotgun. That does a that can really open up holes and walls, which I was looking forward to. You then also have a fully automatic shotgun, which apparently deletes floors and walls. So we'll actually see how that translates properly in the game. But I think the best part is that he has an LMG, and since he is a three armor, he can put an ACOG on it. I'm I'm dumbfounded. Like everyone was always like, yeah, let's bring in a weapon that can compete with Jaeger's carbine. All right, Ubisoft's like, hold my beer. Here's an LMG. So yeah, so now there's like this FM or like this MG42 looking gun in the game on defense for this swole Italian guy who just giggles at you as he completely deletes you off the face of the earth. I think it's a really impressive operator. Um, and I think that he'll have a spot in Siege just based off the fact that his cameras alone um, bring a lot more to the table than uh, Echo in the sense of a strat. So Echo just shuts down plants altogether. But with Maestro, he pairs very, very well with the trap meta. You dwindle down the health enough of the offensive team to the point where Maestro's camera can shoot that person dead or take them off enough to the point where like, oh crap, I'm about to, you know, I'm about to die because there's a laser beam shooting at me. I need to stop it. You're harassing the plant. You're stopping the plant. Smart players will know, okay, the laser beam's shooting at me. I don't need to worry. I can keep planting, right? Okay, keep planting. You'll be fine if you're out of good enough health. Well, if you're at low health and you go for the plant like a lot of people do, you're going to get zapped and you're going to get roasted. So resetting health is going to be very, very important. This is potentially even where Finca now becomes more of a reserve role. Hey, I'm going to go plant. Well, I need to drop a heal so maybe I can hold out against Maestro's lasers because I'm low in health. But if they have a smoke and you're Finca boosted, you're in trouble. So it opens a lot of gateway for trouble and a lot of gateway for reward, if you will. So if you're pairing with a team that can dwindle the enemy's team's health down enough to where your cameras can win, that's pretty impressive. They're not offensive weapons as a whole. They're harassing weapons, but they're definitely weapons that's kind of like when you're low on health and you get hit by a lesion mine and you're like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? Kind of puts you in that moment, but this time it's a laser, you know what I mean? And the window on it does close very uh, slowly, so you can take out the thing 
uh, very quickly. So if you do have another man alive, you might need him to stay and watch and protect you know, you and make sure that camera doesn't zap you. Or you're going to need a Thatcher who, when you go to plant, maybe now it's no longer smoke grenade, smoke grenade, plant. Maybe now it's smoke grenade, smoke grenade, flashbang, and EMP to disable all the gadgets around. That seems like something that's going to be brought into fruition. Thatcher is might need later on a buff to where he'll need another EMP grenade, or he'll need a way to, or you're going to have to play smarter as a Thatcher just to have enough competition to shut down all the stuff that will harass your teammate from planting. It's definitely becoming a more and more team-based orientated game by each and every patch. The problem is, I think, is that the player base themselves aren't going to be up for the task at hand to handle this, and then Ubisoft might have to come in and dumb this down because people simply can't handle the fact that you need to learn to cover your teammates instead of just going for frags all the time. Um, and I feel that Ubisoft is doing a very good idea or, or staying in a very good way to keep this in line so we can have a more competitive base game like it was designed to be instead of just having a shooter where everyone runs around mindlessly and has no control or zone of what they're doing. So yeah, I think that's kind of going to be the impact of these two operators as a whole. I'm looking forward to it. They're bringing a lot of intel, which is what I'm looking forward to, and they're each different enough to where I think that they'll fit differently in strats and roles, but they also can blend in very well with the normal set of crews. So let me know what you guys think of Maestro and Alibi down below in the comment section. Without further ado, I'm The Dangerous, and I'll see you Sex Space next episode. Bye bye <laughs>